this video is going to talk through the process of taking a four flight flight plan and converting it into a Garmin compatible flight plan that can be uploaded then in to the Garmin device we're going to use is the G1000. That's what we have installed in our airplane. It may work on other Garmin devices. Uh, I don't have access to, to those, so I don't know uh, uh, whether that uh, works for all Garmin devices. So the first step is a couple of things you're going to need. Since we're going to go through the process of actually copying it from the iPad to uh, an SD card, we're going to need an SD card. And notice here it's a 4 gigabyte card. That's the largest card that Garmin can currently read. Uh, that's in documentation somewhere. I've tried larger ones and, and the Garmin won't uh, read it. The other thing you're going to need is some kind of a uh, converter device adapter. This one here, it's got two slots. It's got an SD card slot and a micro SD card slot. It's got a USB on one end, USB-C on the other. My iPad happens to have USB-C port, so this is the one I bought. This is the flight plan I currently have loaded into for flight. Um, very simple. Idaho Falls, Roca, Pocatello VOR, Burley VOR, Twin Falls Airport. Putting the K in front of the BYI and the PIH would have identified the airports and could obviously you could uh, fly that route too if you wanted to. One of the things we noticed in some experimentation we were doing is that not all the airports that ForeFlight has in its database reside in the Garmin. We found some private strips and some grass strips and restricted that weren't in the Garmin database. We did some research on Garmin's uh, support page and what they said was that uh, all of the airports that uh, the FAA has in their database creates some very busy sc uh, screens when navigating through urban areas. I think their example was Kansas City. They showed a side-by-side -side comparison of Kansas City with all of the airports uh, that the FAA has and another screen with the uh, airports that Garmin has. And it's obviously, it's very cluttered uh, with uh, all of the airports and their reasoning was navigating through an area like that uh, you don't need to have all that clutter so they've limited uh, the number of airports that they support and have in their database if you're doing some search and rescue you may want to uh, fly uh, to an area uh, a small airport that maybe doesn't reside in the Garmin database uh, one workaround is to create a user waypoint. Um, here's a little airstrip out in the desert here, Cox as well. I don't know if that's in the Garmin database, but I'm going to uh, put my finger on it and hold it there. And I'm going to create a user waypoint here with this lat long. I'm going to select it, and it added it into my flight plan. I'm going to drag it over here so it's in the right spot. Now... If you look at my flight plan, you'll see that I have added that user waypoint uh, and it's inserted it in to the flight plan. Maybe the incident commander wants you to fly a uh, expanding square around that point. You can go to procedure, uh, you go to search and rescue, and uh, um, here you can choose expanding square, uh, circle, creeping line, route, whatever type you want. Uh, this expanding square, uh, you can uh, put that anywhere you want. Um, it's turning out, it's basically in the same place as that waypoint that we just created. Uh, it'll process this just fine. Um, and you can add that to your, your route without a problem. Let's say uh, after creating this, uh, the incident commander says, ah, I don't want you to go to Pocatello. Uh, that's just going to be a waste of time. We found out that he didn't show up there. So uh, take that out of your flight plan. We'll just uh, remove that. 
now our flight plan is basically like this. So we're going to take this flight plan, we're going to copy it to our SD card, and um, insert the adapter into the iPad. If I can find the hole here. There we go. So before we do the copy, we're going to do something that's important. Um, by default, ForeFlight creates a label for this flight plan, and they're going to use by default the beginning and end of the flight plan. So if you go into the file and you look and you see the route name, it's going to be KIDA to KTWF. You may have multiple flight plans named that uh, with slightly different routing. So you want to be more descriptive. Uh, and what's important about this is that this route name label that it has in there, that's what shows up in the flight plan catalog on the G1000. So being descriptive on what's actually in the flight plan helps you when going through the catalog to choose the right one to fly. How you do that is by selecting the star here. That creates a favorite. Uh, you type in the route name. Let's say you want to call the route name is actually the mission number. I'll put in the partial mission number here. And we're, we're flying uh, sortie 11. And we're going to click on save. So what that did, I've done this before, so that's why there's a saying that there's already one there. So what that did was that uh, changed the route name label to what I typed in, and that's what will show up in the uh, flight plan catalog in the G1000, a much better descriptive name for that flight plan. Now let's save it to the SD card. We're going to use the Send To button, and we're going to do Share FPL File, and then this dialog comes up. Uh, notice that we could email this flight plan file to uh, someone else. Let's say an incident commander decides uh, uh, what route we're going to use, and he's going to be using ForeFlight to do that, and he comes up and creates the flight. But he doesn't want to take the time and go through the conversion. So he wants to email that to uh, the person that does that. He can use the, uh, the, the mail function here. We're going to save the... Uh, to files and notice one of the things that comes up is something called no name that's the default for the uh, SD card you uh, can change that if you want it doesn't really matter uh, that's that that's the default and the format on the SD card which uh, doesn't really appear anywhere but it's important is a FAT32 so if you're going to use an old SD card make sure you format it to FAT32 to be compatible with the Garmin hardware the other thing that's important here is this is the name that's going to be saved under ForeFlight. That's the default. All the things you save are going to be called ForeFlight. If you're going to want to have multiple flight plans on an SD card, you're going to want to change the name of that to something more descriptive so you can have multiple plans on your SD card. So you select that, uh, backspace over that, and... Um, let's say we just put in the same thing we typed uh, uh, for the other label. Doesn't have to be the same, it could be anything you choose. Okay, we're done there. Now this is the name that's going to be saved. We're going to select our device and we're going to click on save. So now that flight plan file is saved to the SD card. We're going to pull that out of the iPad here, flip it over, and put that adapter with the SD card into the slot. Now I'm going to bring up to the PC here. I don't have a large stand, so I'm going to hold this. Uh, i got a big screen here, so i got to move it around a little bit. Now that that SD card is in there via the USB, I'm going to open up an Explorer window here. And you'll see that uh, at the, the bottom here, you can see the USB drive is identified here. If I click on that, you'll see that there's a file here called 5251 sortie 11. That was the name we chose. 
there's another file that always creates this dot underscore with the same name. Don't worry about that. That's uh, not going to be used in the process. So this is the file we're going to convert. This is the four flight file. Over on my machine, I've got a folder called F to G uh, four flight to Garmin. And inside of that is where I have the executable. You can put this executable anywhere you want. What's important to know is that where you drag the file from, that's where it's going to create the converted file. So it's really convenient to leave this on the, the uh, SD card and just simply hold the left button down and drag it over to the executable and drop it in there. Now you go back here and you see there's a new file, G dash, with the same file name as the ForeFlight file. This is the Garmin convertible, con converted file that'll upload into the Garmin. From here, uh, what you would do now is you would uh, insert that into the Garmin and up upload that or import it. Before we do that, though, let's take a quick look at um, the inside of this file. We're going to do it open with, uh, we'll choose Notepad here. And you see down here towards the bottom, this is the label, the route name label I was talking about. This is uh, the contents right here is what's going to show up in the catalog on the G1000. A much better name than just uh, IDA to TWF as an example. So now that we have this on the SD card, we'll take the SD card and we'll insert it into the top slot of the MFD. And it's important that you do that before you turn the MFD on. The reason is because once the MFD is running, Garmin doesn't uh, look at interrupts for uh, inserted SD cards and it won't reread the SD card or read the SD card if it's inserted after the MFD has been started up. So you put the SD card into the top slot of the MFD, turn the MFD on, wait for it to boot up. Okay, so I've got a simulator up here. I can show most of uh, the importing process for you. Um, once you have the Garmin file on the SD card, you insert the, the SD card into the top slot of the MFD prior to turning the MFD on uh, so that it reads the card. But you go to uh, right here, there's a flight plan button. You press that and you get this screen. Now by rotating the small knob here, you see down at the bottom, you have a flight plan catalog. Once you get that, press the uh, knob and it puts the cursor inside of the flight plan window here. Now by turning the knob again, go down to an empty slot and at the bottom of the MFD, you'll see a button down here called import. If you click on import, what you'll see in this panel here is a list of the files that are on the SD card. You simply scroll down to the file that you want to uh, load in, uh, the one with the G in front of it. And then um, you'll press the uh, enter button and then that will uh, import it into this empty slot here. If you have any questions, uh, ask them in the uh, comment section. I'll put the uh, in the show notes a link to where you can get this executable. Right now it's on a Google Drive, and um, I'll post that in there so that you can download this executable and use it uh, for your own uh, flying.